Sam Andrick here, Bentley Systems, in our final video in the Import Points VBA series. This is the eighth video in the series. This is a personal favorite of mine. In this one, what we're going to do is we're going to be placing cells, but the cell that we place will be determined by a value in one of the columns from the CSV file. Now, as usual, behind me is the web page where you can go to download the VBA. Again, check with your CAD support people. Make sure they're cool with it. Below will be a link to that page. So let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we're going to see how we can use the Import Points VBA to import data from a CSV file and place cells based upon values from that CSV file. So let's take a look at the CSV file. Drag this over. This is technically the Excel spreadsheet, but we exported this out as a CSV. It's the same data. So here I have all of this information. I'm going to be placing culverts and I'm going to be placing cells. And what I want to do is I want to place two different types of cells. One based upon the health assessment column, whether it's below 50, place one cell. If it's above 50, place a different cell. I also want to attach all of this information as properties of an item type. So the first row, that's our header row. Again, always recommended that you label the headers because it makes it easier for when you go to map them in this VBA. So that's our source data. I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way. I'm going to go to my utilities tab and there's my VBA manager icon. I'm going to click that. Now I've located the VBA in the correct location, the right folder. My station is looking, so therefore I see it listed. I'm going to go ahead and load it. I'm going to close the VBA projects dialog. Here's my import points VBA dialog. My data is longitude latitude. The data right here shows longitude latitude. You always want to double check. I'm going to click settings and about. The very first checkbox is input file has header row. You saw mine did have a header row. Again, always recommend it. Also, I've checked the box for coordinates or in latitude, longitude, and again, that's what we want. So we're good to go here, but it's always good to check that. Next thing is output two. We plan to place cells in our file and also attach item types. It just says item, but it means item type. So that's going to be what we're going to be placing. Now we're going to go to our select source file. That's the CSV file. So I'm going to select that. Now, I've already done this, so it's already on my history list here. You can see there's my header information coming across. Again, that's why we recommend that in the CSV file that you put in a header row. That way we know what that data is. If you didn't do that, then what you would just see is the first row of the data, and you would have to figure out what that is actually. So here we have this information. Now we have chosen cell plus item, so we need to choose a cell. Now I have a cell library here, it's called culverts.cel, and I've created a couple of cells in here for our purpose. First, one's called bad culvert. Now this is kind of humorous here, but if it has a health assessment less than 50, I want it to place this cell. And if it has one above 50, I want it to place the good cell. So we're gonna see two cells placed based upon the health assessment column. Now there's a checkbox right here. It says use cell specification rules. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to click the ellipse icon here. There's going to create a field called ruled spec cell. If that field contains, and this is where we can put in an operator instead of contains, we're going to say if it's greater than, and let's say the value is 50, what cell do we want it to place? The good culvert. Now we click the add button, it shows up in the list below. We want to repeat the process. Now it's going to be less than 50. We want it to place the bad culvert. Again, we hit the plus sign. Now you need to hit done. It won't close the dialog, but it will apply this change. Done, then we close the dialog. That's set. Now we have to pick one of these cells before we can click the select default cell and continue. It doesn't matter which cell you pick. You just have to pick one. So I'm going to click on bad culvert, and then I'm going to click the button. It takes me back here. So there's that rule specified cell that I was talking about, that field. 
the field that's going to get mapped to that will ultimately be the health assessment. But we don't see the other fields. That's where we're going to go to the select item types button. We're going to click on that. Now, if you haven't worked with item types before in MicroStation, they were originally introduced back in the later versions of V8i, but you could only view them. You really couldn't make any edits or create them. Now in MicroStation Connect, we can define item types. It's like tags, except more powerful. And if you're an AutoCAD user, it's like attributes in AutoCAD, probably the closest equivalent. So in this case, we don't have a item type library, nor do we have an item type. And if you've never created item types before, you don't need to worry about that because we have a button here that says create item types from source fields. Remember the column titles? That's what we're going to base it on. So I'm going to click this, comes up and it says new or existing library. Again, if you don't have an existing library, you can just create one. Or if you do have one, you can add to it. We don't. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call it culverts. And we're going to give the item type name. It's going to be called health. Again, you could call this whatever you want. doesn't matter. Below are the columns that we want to turn into properties of the item type. Longitude and latitude are not checked, and that is by default. We already have them over here, but this is just going to be used to place the cells. If we wanted this to be properties of the cell, then we could actually add this in so that we could actually label it using the place note tool and we could extract out the longitude latitude. We're not going to be doing that in this case. Now I am going to scroll down, make sure I have everything checked and there's two at the bottom that aren't. To add or remove, you hold the control key down and you click what you want to add or remove. Again, hold the control key down. So now I have it all set. I'm going to click Create Append. Creates the library, creates the item type. These are my properties. I'm going to click Select Item Type. You now see all of those fields appear. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select the click here to automatically map fields because my fields were generated from the header information coming from the CSV file. So they're going to match up perfectly. So I'm going to click here and almost perfect. Elevation, it did its best. It guessed and it came up with health. I don't want that there. So I'm going to double click to remove that. Now I do want rule spec cell, and that's going to be number 11, health assessment. I'm just going to drag and drop it over. You could have dragged and dropped any one of these over, um, but if they're named properly, like latitude and longitude, the program automatically recognizes that. So now we have everything set. We've got all of our header information mapped to fields, and we have our rule spec cell defined. Next step is just place. So I'm going to click place, and you can see the cells appear on my screen. There's my happy cell. That's the one that has an assessment higher than 50. This one has it lower than 50. To verify that, I'm just going to go to my properties. Here's my item type. It's called health. You can see down here, my health assessment is 64. That's higher than 50. That means it's a happy cell. Let's look at the other one here. You can see its health assessment is 24. That's why it got the sad cell. So we can place these cells based upon values from the Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to close that. Next thing is we can label using the place note tool in text favorites and extract out properties. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my space bar. Now I've customized my space bar pop-up menu. I'm going to go to my place note. On my text editor, the yellow star, I've created a text favorite. It's called Post Mile and Health. To see how I did that, I'm going to go to Manage. Now I'm doing this in my active file. You obviously can create text favorites in your active file. It's recommended that you do it in a DGN library file and that should be done by a CAD manager or some organization um, where they made it available to everybody. So and this is going to be local, so I'm going to expand this out. There's my text favorite. I select that. You see the definition to the right. Now, I typed in PM equals. That's my text. To the right 
it's actually looking for properties. It's looking for an item type called health and a property called post mile. And the same thing down here, health and health category. That's what it's going to display. Now, how I added that in, I'm just going to show you quickly here. Let's go ahead and type in type equals. Put an equal sign there. Now I want to put in that information. So I come down here to go to field type. I see item types. Now you have to have item types in the file in order for it to recognize this. And then it comes up with health. And then I want to go down to type. And then I can say accept. And that's going to add that to it. So that'll get that easy to customize your text favorites. Now I'm not going to go ahead and put this in. I'm just going to cancel and not save. I'm going to choose that favorite, post mile and health. I'm going to place the note by touching or snapping to the element. It's going to extract out that information. There it is. There's my post mile and there's my health. I'm going to do it to this one here. It's going to extract out that information and it's allowing me to label it based on that information. Again, I could have done any of the information that were item type properties. Could have been type, could have been longitude, latitude, anything that was attached to it. Last thing I'm going to show you is reports. I'm going to close these dialogs out. Again, pop-up menu, hit the space bar. I added this down here, reports. Again, I've created a couple of reports in this file. One was called culvert data report. If I expand this, you can see all my columns that I have here. Now you can turn on or off these columns, like I've hid health assessment here. If I do a quick preview right up here, this will bring up a preview of what the report will look like. So it's showing me all this information. Now I'm listing out individually each one of those culverts. You may or may not want to do that. We can aggregate and count them. And I'm going to show you that in my next report. Now, this was something you started with in the Excel spreadsheet or CSV file. And you may think, well, why would I want to do this? You may not need to do this report, but I can now place this as a table in MicroStation if I wanted to. I'm going to close this. The next one, this is going to be where it's going to count them up. So I'm going to do a preview on this. And now all I'm counting up here is the health category. I told it, look for that category. And then I wanted it to group them and give me a total count. So I know of the fair, there are 22, and of the poor, there's 31. Again, this is dynamic. If I was to uh, add or subtract these, you would see this update. So over here, I'm going to get rid of this cell here. I'm going to delete that. It was 31. When we refresh it, you can see now the count is 30. So this is a, another benefit to using item types in MicroStation, so you can generate these reports. So hopefully you found this bonus round of how to use the import points, VBA, to place cells based upon values from your CSV file. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you, and see you next time.